All right, welcome back to a new touch in a tutorial. And on this one, we're going to have some fun with text and instancing. So what we're doing here is basically we have a we have a text stat where we can write in anything. Can't be like too long, I guess, but yeah, you can write a text in there. And then we're using instancing, texture instancing, and, and feedback and stuff to uh, sort of manipulate this. So if I press one on my keyboard, you can now see we can sort of make these letters fall apart or sort of explode. There's some different things we can do. We can also just make them like jump around and then go back. Or we can do things like um, using uh, this so we can, I don't know, show them or hide them or whatever. You know, there's there's some different ways you, you can use this. Uh, I just want to sort of give you a starting point. And uh, then you can uh, hopefully manipulate this further to create some, some more interesting movements and, and everything. So this is really sort of a basic setup, but it's already kind of complex. And uh, I think it shows a lot of different stuff like replicators, texture instancing, and how to use feedback and like tops to, to mani manipulate instances, right? All right, so let's get started. All right, there's one, one word of caution for Mac users. I'm actually using uh, the instance textures mode here so um, check out my other video on how to how to do it that that's this way with like texture cord op and w and stuff uh, to be able to to use this on a mac as well i'm not going to show that in this video so you just gotta sort of convert that all right <clears throat> so let's go get going and just delete everything and i'm going to start by building a simple render network with a rectangle a transform setting the uniform scale 2.2 and I'm gonna add a geo from here a camera and a render I'm gonna add a transform after the render and a null call that BG display it in the background set background color to one combo the background color on let's make like a light gray here let's add a fong material and um, our render setup is kind of dumb kind of done, not not done. <laughs> All right, so let's change this to seven just to move, move out a bit on the cam. And uh, let's actually make our grid, right? We wanted to use instancing sort of to make a grid uh, where we can uh, put our letters on. So I'm gonna add a constant chop just to be able to set some parameters. I'm gonna call this one um, grid size. The first channel, let's just call this node uh, setup and I'm gonna make it like green a bit bigger let's make it active because we're gonna use that channel and I'm gonna add a ramp top on this ramp I'm gonna grab this um, setup grid size and put it on here actually let's change this to 8 so we have an 8 by 8 grid I'm gonna change the pixel format to 32 bit float and both of these two nearest pixel I'm gonna copy this and just pipe the input into the second ramp and on my second ramp, I'm going to change the type to vertical. Let's add a reorder after the first one and pipe the second one into the second input. Let's add a constant from the ramp 2. Change its alpha 2.1 and input that into the reorder. Let's select input 2 and input 3 here so we get this kind of texture. And then I'm going to add a math and a null. And I'm going to call this now pause for position, go to my instance, like to my geo, turn instancing on and use my pause here, R, G and B. Right, so now they're very close together. So let's go to a ramp, uh, math, and let's change the range to minus one and one on both the G and the R. So we're basically remapping everything. So it's sort of centered, right? Cool, so now we have a grid based on tops and we're gonna look at this tops stuff here later on a bit more. What I'm gonna do now is add uh, the whole letter part, right? Bef before we come back to this instancing. So I'm gonna start by just uh, having a text here, text add, just gonna make it quite big. I'm gonna copy the text I had before and just put that in here. So just says, whoops. This is a text with many words for your pleasure, Merry Crisis. I don't know. I don't know why I wrote that. Let's just sample text, right? So um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and use a base here where I'm going to do all the 
replicator magic for the different letters because we want to create a texture now uh, for every different letter that we have in here. So I'm going to call this, whoops, I'm going to call this letters. I'm going to make it like orange or like, I don't know, pink or something because so it's, so we know it's kind of important. I'm going to split my view up here and go to my letters. Let's turn off these parameters here and um, let's go ahead and add a select that. Could also be an in, but whatever. Let's just drag this on here. And let's add a substitute dat. And in the substitute dat, we're gonna do a little Python expression. So on the first one, I'm gonna just write op select one. So our operator that's that's going in here, and then just dot text. So we're basically just using that text that is in here. I'm just gonna copy this go to after and pass that in here. And then we're going to add a little some more expressions here, which I just found on a forum. So I don't fully understand what's going on there. But basically, what we're doing here is replacing um, where there is nothing, whenever there's nothing, we're like, or no letter, no symbol, we're replacing that with a slash. And then we're also adding one and minus one like this. I don't know why, to be honest. But uh, that doesn't always matter. <laughs> so it works. Um, so now we have a slash between every letter. And now the cool thing is we can just use a convert that and split cells at that slash. So everywhere there, every, at every point there is a slash, we're just going to create a new column. And so now every letter, including spaces has their own column. And now we can add a uh, transpose. So it's a it's rows and not columns because we're going to use a replicator, which is looking for rows. Um, and I'm going to add like a null here to and call this uh, letters. One thing I uh, want to do here as well, which is kind of important. Let's add a merge here. And because the thing is we have right now we have 64 we have a grid of eight by eight. So 64 instances. And uh, the thing is, we're going to have some errors, like right now, our letter is actually like are basically the exact amount of that, which is kind of random, actually, <laughs> it wasn't planned. Um, <clears throat> so because, we have, yeah, we have uh, 40, uh, 64 rows, but that's not always going to be the case, right? We want to make this dynamic. So we want to be able to to input as many letters. So if it's more than 64, or especially if it's less, then we're gonna have a problem right now because it's just, yeah, it actually crashed right recording earlier because I didn't, didn't I hadn't done this. So I'm gonna add a table just to like show you what, what I mean here. And let's actually delete a few, like a, for your, for your merry crisis. <laughs> um, so now we have uh, 55 rows. And now I basically just wanna add as many rows as we need and like until we get to 64, right? So in that case, it would be nine. But again, we wanna make this dynamic and not manual. So I'm just gonna add like one column. And um, in this rows parameter, I'm gonna put a little expression. And that expression is gonna be, uh, basically we wanna have, again, this size. So I'm just gonna grab that on here. And uh, actually, I'm just gonna do this a bit cleaner. So like this, and then channel zero, it's just much shorter. Multiply it by itself, so that's 64. Let's put this into brackets. And then minus the amount of rows that we have here. So minus OP transpose one um, dot, oops, nope, dot num rows. So now it's it's nine. So if we merge them together, we're gonna have 64 rows here. And now this is gonna be dynamic. So if we change the grid size or if any, if anything, it's always gonna be the correct amount here at the end, even if there's less letters. So that's that's really quite important to to have there sort of a, as a bug fix or prevention bug prevention, I guess. Okay, so I'm gonna add a replicator. And we're gonna have some fun with this replicator. Let's make sure that we're actually putting this at zero because the replicators, like the replicants are always gonna be here starting at this, at the center of this cross um, because the layout origin is set to zero, zero by default. Let's use letters as the template dat table here. 
and um, let's create our textures. So I'm going to add text top, and I'm going to call this L0 for like letter 0, and I'm going to type a little expression here again. So I'm going to type in op letters, and then 0, 0. So column 0 and row 0. But so the thing is, we, we want to make this dynamic again. We don't want to have the same um, letter for all of them. So let's change this first, like the first digit here, the row index to me dot digits because we have L zero here, right? So this is the digit we're grabbing. So now I'm going to use this as a master. I'm going to change operator prefix to L, and you can see it has now created all of my 64 or like 63 uh, copies of the master, each with a different letter or the corresponding le letter. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go in here and change the font. Um, I also change this to like auto fit always. Just go to my replicator, click recreate all of them. And uh, now we have some nice letters. And you can see these, like these last ones here are empty because uh, those are where we have added just empty rows to to prevent errors. Okay, so now with all these textures, now we have to make sure uh, that we put them all onto these instances here. So uh, we know that we're in inside of letters, right? There's letters um, base, and uh, all of these are called L and then a digit. So I'm just going to close this. I'm going to come back here and create a pattern chop because we want to want to create a, uh, an index value. So I'm going to change the type to ramp. So it just goes up. I'm going to change the channel name to index. And I'm going to go ahead and just use this on here. So again, our grid size. And again, I'm going to change this to just like channel zero. And I'm going to just take it and multiply it by itself. So we again have the whole amount of uh, the grid, like the entire grid size, right? We have 64 instances. And I can now just copy this parameter and change the range here because right now, well, we have 64 samples, but it only goes up like, it only is like mapped between zero and one. And we actually have to uh, pick the different number uh, like of textures up to 63, right? Because we go back in here, our highest texture is L63. So we have to like, we can like now pass the reference here, paste the reference and um, just subtract one because we're starting at zero, right? I'm going to add a null and call this uh, text index. I'm going to go to my geo and go to the instance two page. And I'm going to go ahead and use this operator as a texture texture index of P. I'm going to use channel index to pick the yeah, as a as a texture index. <laughs> channel. And now we want to type in letters, right? We're going to look for the textures that are inside of letters. And then we want to look at L and then all of the L's. Cool. So that is working. It looks kind of weird though, right? Kind of the wrong way. So there's an easy fix for that. We can just insert a flip top here and just flip Y. Okay. Cool, so this is working. So we have the text on there. And now if we uh, change something here for your uh, pleasure, Merry Crisis. Um, it's <coughs> not working. <laughs> uh, okay, something really weird going on here. Ah, okay, we cannot um make a new line that doesn't work so um yeah make sure they're always in one line for this to work cool um right so that is the basic setup and now let's have a look at how we can actually make this stuff move or where things get interesting right so <clears throat> we have this uh, little thing going on here uh what i'm going to do is add a keyboard in chop and I'm um, going to sort of make this, let's make this green actually, and let's make this uh, red because it's like a, we had a setup and here we have the, the main shop. So if I press one now, you can see uh, we're like resetting that. 
No, no, we're, we're not actually resetting anything yet. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but we're gonna. So I'm gonna use a <coughs> logic chop and change channel POP to toggle. So like, we basically have an on and off button. And um, I'm gonna use a null from here and I'm gonna add a lag and uh, another null. And we're gonna come back to this. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is um, actually just go ahead and drag this reorder over here and copy it. It's kind of a cable salad, as we say in German. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's technically not that, that complicated. Really just have two RAMs that are making the grid and we have one constant that is um, just setting like a default value for the Z axis. So on that Z axis, we actually want to go ahead and change something, right? Because um, Z is like how we can move stuff closer to us. And uh, well, really all we need to do is uh, add the value to itself. And you might already guess how we can do that. And yes, it is feedback. <laughs> so I'm going to add a composite. And I'm going to change the operation here to add. And I'm going to add a feedback top and a level. And pipe that back into here and drag this onto the feedback. I'm going to use this reorder here. And um, on this feedback, I'm going to use uh, this value to reset it. So now every time I like, you know, I'm pressing once, nothing happens. And uh, the second time I press, it's going to be a reset. I'm going to see why that's uh, why we're doing it that way. Um, on my level, I need to change uh, the brightness very slightly to be able to like you know, to add itself, to add itself to itself, something like that. Uh, and what's also very important on this level, we need to turn clamp input to zero and one off. So now if I press one twice, you can see we're like moving the letters towards us. And actually, um, on our cam, we might want to zoom out a bit more. Okay, now what we, actually what we, well, Actually, what we want to do now, I want to insert a switch here because we want to have an initial state, which is what we we had already created. And then once we press one, we want to switch to this feedback loop. So what I'm going to do is uh, use my second channel that we've created here and um, change this to blend between inputs. And then we can see now we're like switching between uh, one and the other. I might actually want to go up with this. And uh, I'm not sure if we want to set it down like this. So, you know, like sort of fade it back. Um, one thing we also want to do here, because there's, little, there's this little error in the beginning, which I really don't like. And I noticed a, a way to go, go get around this is using a function and then changing this to input whatever that <laughs> symbol means, exponent. <laughs> Uh, I still don't know. <laughs> um, and then exponent value 10. And uh, this way we're like slowly go getting up and also makes the animation a bit cooler. And if you just wanna, if you wanna increase the uh, like speed here, you can either change the brightness or the uh, input constant. Uh, yeah, you can also like go down with the value here so it's not as extreme. But yeah, <clears throat> I like that. Okay, so um, that's one part. Of course, we can also add some <clears throat> noise. So let's add a noise top here. Let's change this monochrome off. Let's go down with the offset. And actually, yeah, on my our Fong, let's change blending to on. So you can see, uh, we really only have the letters and not like the the uh, dark part around, around it, or I guess the bright part in this case. But yeah, <clears throat> so now we have uh, some noise going on. We can of course animate this. ABS time dot seconds times point whatever, point three, you know, this classic expression. I don't know how many times I've typed this. Um, and <clears throat> what we can do now is we can increase, like if we go to output, 
we can use the same value here, same channel. <clears throat> Sorry for my croaky voice. Um, to uh, like start the wait. Let's turn depth test off. Yeah, I think you have to de turn depth test off as well to make it work properly. But basically now what we're doing, we're also starting sort of like or showing the noise uh, only when we're like pressing one, when we're like starting the explosion. And uh, yeah, that's that's kind of fun. <laughs> All right, um, let us add a, another noise from here because we also want to add something else. Let's, uh, let's just change this to noise. Here we can leave it at in plus input plus noise. Here just here we just want to have noise. We also want to have it colored, and um, let's just go ahead and animate this. Just copy the expression, put that into here. Let's maybe use a different seed, <coughs> and um, let's use a math and a null, which we're gonna call road. And I'm gonna go to my geo instance one page and put that onto here. And I'm gonna use R and G and B for rotation. Nothing's really happening. That's because we need to rearrange our math here from zero and one to zero and 360. And uh, now they're rotating around, but maybe we only wanna have them ro rotate around um, when we're like, um, when we're starting the, the whole process. So we can do the same thing here, really. Just put that on a noise scale. So now they're gonna be rotating more when this uh, channel is a value is higher. So yeah, we can also just get rid of the switch. And like once we press one now, it's really just gonna be this cloud of like noisy letters. And then once you hit one again, like if you, if we go back to our lag here and just put a one here on the output again, you can see now we're like, we can like reset the whole thing, which is really fun. Got word cloud, and then you can just reset it. Okay, um, one other thing I want to show you is uh, color. So uh, what we what you can do again? I'm just gonna add. Let's just add it from here. It's another noise. Um, one of, maybe from here. Let's actually get rid of this. Let's also get rid of monochrome. Uh, actually, let's make it monochrome. Let's call this call for color, and. Um, Let's also insert a limit in here. I'm gonna change the quantize to round and 0.5. And I'm gonna to go to my instance two, use call here and use R as alpha. And now this way, I mean, you can also change it to like one. So you're really only showing on and off or you kind of make it fade like this. I don't know, there's uh, many cool ways you can use this. You can, of course, also turn monochrome off and use like R, G, and B. And then change the constant to one, to uh, white, I mean. And this way you could add color, but I'm not a huge fan of that right now. My life's colorful enough at the moment. <laughs> Oh man, all right. <laughs> yeah, so that that's one way. And now I just wanna show you how you can, you know, change them things. So first off, of course, we can go to our grid size and we can change this to like 10 by 10. And then this way we, now we have 100 uh, instances. So now we could add like a longer text after this. So long, longer text and more, more fun or something, right? And it still works, right? It still, it still works. <laughs> cool. Uh, one thing we can also do, oops, um, let's go to our comp and change this to subtract. And now if we press one, they're gonna like fly away and leave us forever until we press one and they're all, ba all back. So yeah, either add us or sub subtract. And uh, yeah, as I said in the beginning, this is really sort of just a, uh, basic setup. I mean, it's already pretty complex, but it's like, um, yeah, with this tops, uh, if you if you're already a bit familiar with feedback and stuff, then then I'm, I'm looking forward to what you what you're coming up with, because there's so many things you can do with this, uh, especially also using color and rotation and stuff. So um, this is really just the beginning. Um, oops, what did I do here? 
So uh, yeah, just to do a little recap to, to understand what's going on here. So we have uh, a render setup with um, a simple, even though maybe it doesn't look like it, but it is a simple setup for just making a grid. So we have a grid based on the amount of like rows and columns that we set here. So in this case, it's a hundred. And then we just, uh, what we're doing here in the letters, we're just subtract, like we're just extracting all the letters from the text that we're setting uh, out, out, like out here. Um, and <clears throat> then uh, we're just creating like a, a replication network where we're just picking every letter and making like a texture for it. Um, and uh, if there's not enough letters, we're just adding some empty spaces. And then we're, we're just making a, a little um, channel, which is grabbing every letter like or every symbol for for each instance. <clears throat> and then what we're doing is we're creating a little feedback and uh, with some logic up here so we can like turn turn the sort of explosion on and off. So with this feedback, what we're really doing is we're just changing um, the Z position. So the yeah, yeah, the Z position. And uh, also we're just adding noise and or, or we're basically showing the noise. Yeah, adding the noise is a better word. Yeah, so um, that's it. Because this is probably going to be the last video this year, I just want to say, like, I don't know, I'm super heckin' thankful for all of you people. You're you're amazing that you're making this possible for me to, to just work from home, work on what I love, and uh, get money for it from all of you generous, lovely people. And... Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, as I said, my life is very co colorful at the moment. It's all been a huge mess. And um, I don't know, it's been really tough as well, but also really interesting. And I hope you understand if I'm like not posting as much, but I really hope I w we will have a wonderful another year together. And I will keep doing this as long as I can, uh, because it's just wonderful. And um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you so much for your support if you're supporting me <laughs> and um, uh, thank you for watching and um, yeah I'll see you in the next video in the next year I hope you have a wonderful Christmas time all right see ya <laughs>